Okay, well, we are coming to check on the, the chickens. They look awesome. What a great day. So again, just about 475 birds are out here. And um, like I said, these are, these are the Freedom Rangers. And there are a lot of people out there that think we're crazy raising these. See these shadows, it's nice. That means the sun's out. There's the guinea hens. And I gotta tell you, that's another thing. Many people are like, you have guinea hens? They're so loud. They're so annoying. I can't believe you guys have those. But I gotta tell you, they do a great job for us of uh, keeping the ticks away. And they do a great job of, we feel, keeping predators away, which is absolutely uh, fantastic for us. So we just let them roam around. They enjoy their time on property and they do their thing. Every season, uh, you know, we have a few people that say, hey, can we take those and eat them? And well, my wife is not going for it. So let's take a look here at these suckers. Uh, let me open this door. Let me see if I can open this door. It's something that's sticky. But there they are. So they're, uh, you know, they, they go through a ton of water. That's the only, that's the only thing. They go through a bunch of water. And I want to say we have about 185 to 110 in each pen. And we just give them uh, pretty much as much feed as they want. And then they peck at the ground. They do their thing. We got the tarp back there. So if the weather kicks on and we get some rain, uh, we pull that tarp up and, and that's it. But what a great situation, right, for these chickens to be outside. There's so much talk about free range and... You know, these big chicken companies that are out there, they're all full of crap. We know that, you know, with their free range, and, you know, whatever other terminology they use. But, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. And again, I apologize for the wind, but letting these guys out here, letting them roam is, uh, is a really big, big deal. But again, the Freedom Rangers, people don't like them because they take longer to grow. So uh, most farms out there, most small farms, are using broiler crosses, these big, fat, fast-growing white chickens. And we've done that in the past. But here's the thing, when we've done it in the past, let's say we've we bought a hundred of them, right? A hundred chicks. Sometimes we'd have 10 of them die. We'd have 10 chicks that are dead on arrival. And we'd have a couple more that within the next couple days have, um, you know, have passed. So the health of those birds is not great on arrival. And then the next situation is, as they get bigger and they put on weight and they get heavier and heavier, it presents the next problem because they can't walk, so it's hard to move them in the tractors. And then, you know, some of them have heart attacks because they grow so fast and so big so quickly. So what we said was this, we're gonna charge more per bird. You know, we are definitely charging more per bird, but, we have to because it costs more to raise these birds it's an extra four weeks uh to raise them sometimes even more so we have to we have to cover the feed over those four weeks and we have to cover that time but because it's a slow growing bird it's it's absolutely delicious and um and the health of these birds is amazing out of 500 birds we've lost two birds two birds that's amazing and the health is just, you know, um, it's great. It's great on, on these birds. But again, it does take more time. So um, I know, again, most, most small farms are trying to take advantage of a short chicken growing season and doing the best they can. So I get it. And we get it. It's just for our market and what we're trying to do and our climate, we just feel much more confident with these birds being a good fit for what we're trying to do here. So that's what we got. Freedom Rangers, um, you know, we have, uh, like I said, this year, I think we're gonna grow close to 3,000, 3,500 birds. So it's a big, it's a big year for us, but I, I've said this before, I'm convinced if we had 10,000 birds, we could probably, um, we could probably move a good amount of them and it would last us throughout the year, which storage would be a problem with the frozen birds. But uh, chicken is, is definitely in demand. People want chicken. People love chicken. We love chicken. Um, but 
again, uh, we just don't have the facilities to, uh, to handle all, all of these chickens. So this is what we got here outside right now. And we brought the next batch of young chickens, which I'll walk over to. We, we got the next batch that we took out of the brooder and we brought them down into the bottom area of our of our chicken house this was a garden i'm thinking if we should till it we probably will till all this chicken when they were in there sorry for the wind guys and gals but we got the next group of chicks in here now so yeah we'll check them out so we cleaned most of this out today all fresh shavings again another expense because these shavings get expensive from the tractor supply but look at these little birdies so we'll keep them in here so we got them out of their brooder and we may end up having to split this room into quarter uh, into halves um, just so we can raise more in here because we have another class coming in um, we got another class coming in tomorrow morning. So we'll have another 400 or so uh, Freedom Ranger chicks, day old chicks coming in. So that's going to be our rotation. Again, we were going to finish this apartment and um, <clears throat> use it for our farm help. But the truth is, <laughs> it's really showing great value for the chickens. Now, at the end of the day, we may end up having to put up another... Um, structure maybe even like i've seen people use greenhouses those seem really cool to raise chicks maybe we would put a, a cement pad down so making the cleaning easy and then build a greenhouse so that we can raise um you know chickens in that in that environment but this is all decisions we have to make and obviously we have to weigh out a lot of different things in making those decisions but um sort of where everything's at so these guys are now down here they're doing their thing the other birds are outside doing their thing, and tomorrow the day old chicks will come in. So there's these uh, three phases, I guess you'd say, of raising chickens here at, at Freedom Farms. And this is phase two that I'm showing you right here. We started with phase three, and tomorrow when the day old suckers come in, I'll try to show you phase one. We get the call from the post office in the morning. They call us and say, could you pick these chickens up? Could you pick them up, please? They're making so much noise, they're driving us crazy. We don't wanna go postal. <laughs> so anyway, post office, sometimes they get a little sensitive on different things, but we all know they have a history there. Look at that rooster. You know, poultry is, is um, it's not how we started. We actually, you know, as first generation farmers, we actually went right to the beef. We said, let's go, let's get to the beef. Let's go beef. So we started with 13 cows. That's how we started. And then from there, Tractor Supply had their, their chickens. And we said, all right, let's go raise some, some chickens. And we got our egg layers and we did that whole deal. And we're like, why aren't they laying eggs after a month? And we quickly realized that it would take some time for them to start laying the eggs. And we got a bunch of straight runs and we probably are overpopulated with some roosters but uh that's just a signal for me that's what happens when you're overpopulated with roosters that's a signal for me to um to go buy more egg layers more uh sexed female egg layers so that we can uh balance the roost a little bit i guess you can say but um yeah but every, everything's um everything happened in sequence for us you know we started with uh, like i said 13 cows then we got the egg layers then from there we brought the pigs in and then after the pigs my wife lauren wanted goats so we got a couple goats and then i said well we should probably get a couple sheep so then we covered the whole gamut sheep goats chickens meat chickens egg layers pigs and um and beef and then, well, Thanksgiving was coming, so we had to do turkeys too. So that was a real crazy time last year. Man, I almost had a panic attack getting all those turkeys out to customers all over the country. 
you know, with the, with the turkeys, when it's time, when they're grown out, it's like, okay, get them processed, you know, freeze them up, and you have to get them to the customers before this day. And we did have a couple turkey fatalities in the mail, but um, ultimately we were able to recover, and, and that worked out really well. So, anyway, another beautiful day here at, at Freedom Farms in, in Green, New York. And, uh, you know, I always like to bring up a topic. Sometimes our Facebook or Instagram could be a little bit fun, but also a little bit controversial. And uh, we like it that way because we like to have a little bit of fun there. And um, we had a lady post yesterday and she said, you know, you're too political. You're too political. And that's why we're not buying from you. And the response back was, look, you may think that, but, you know, we're pro-America. We're pro-farming. We're pro police pro fire um you know we're farmers right we're pro guns we're pro all those good all those things right that's what we do here at freedom farms uh, you know the name pretty much gives it away with the flag in it and everything else we're pro military if i didn't say that pro veterans all, all that stuff and um you know we uh we we started this farm to preserve freedom and to preserve um, liberty and our rights as as a people so we do talk about it because it's important to us and you know when you think back on farmers and farming that's the that's the fabric of this country you know at four o'clock in the morning farmers are up right dairy farmers we give them a heck of a lot of credit because they're up milking and it's an everyday thing and it keeps coming at you beef's a little bit easier next to that but, you know, farming is America, right? And farming is affected by, you know, what goes on in this country. Farming, we feel it, right? Fuel prices go up, farmers feel it. Um, cost of, of goods goes up, farmers feel it. Cost of everything goes up, we feel it. I bought four waterers yesterday that I showed you with the uh, in those chicken tractors. Four. Four waterers for $200. I mean, these are just basically plastic buckets and it cost me $200. I mean, that's, that's sick, right? Like, how do I factor that cost into the cost of our chickens? You know, I mean, that's, that's a $200 expense for four and we need about 10, right? So, so it's kind of crazy, right? $46 each. You know, that, that, that's, that's a lot of money for just to give your chickens water. But we're constantly being affected by, by markets. So when we talk about these things and what's going on, um, you know, in our country, we talk, we're talking about them because it affects everybody. And it's going to keep affecting everybody. So we want to make everybody aware of the effect because first it affects us, then it affects you. First, it affects what happens at the farm level, and then it ultimately affects what happens at, you know, the grocery store level and the and the community, uh, the community level. So that's why we we talk about it because it's important. These are important topics of discussion. I mean, today you got kids; they don't know if they're boys, girls, cats, dogs. They have no idea what they are, and that's that's a sad situation, right? But here we know what we are and we know what we stand for and we know what we believe in. And at the end of the day, you know, it's it's our job to to make you aware of, of what we feel at this ground ground level. It's not to make you feel bad. It's not to make you feel um, sorry for us. Certainly not. But we do it because we want to let you know what may be coming. Right. When, when we talk about the price of beef that at auctions, it's going for record prices eventually that's going to affect you right your price of a steak at a restaurant is going to go up your favorite steakhouse um you know if you're purchasing from a grocery store the price of things is going to go up we feel it here first right we see it in the in the public market we share that information so just be ready no need to get nervous or panic or anything like that but it's just our duty to to share these things right what we experience and what we feel and what we know if it helps our fellow man and woe man. So that's what, what it's all about. So, you know, we took a, a little bit of offense, right? When somebody says, oh, you're talking too much about this and we're not gonna buy from you. Look, they weren't gonna buy anyway, because if they did, 
um, that if they were going to, they would have already. And that and that's okay. We have a great customer base, great people, um, freedom lovers, and we'll take them every day of the week. So anyway, we had a we had a little fun today on on our Facebook page. But that's that's what it's all about. So anyway, that's what we got. It's a beautiful day. The ducks are relaxing over there. The chickens are truly free ranging and going all over the place the guinea hens have been all the way into that far pasture we had some fresh hay brought this morning not fresh actually we had some wrapped hay brought this morning and we can't wait for the farms around here to start cutting hay because there's nothing better than the smell of fresh hay and there's nothing better than stocking up on hay to make sure you have enough so anyway that's what we got that's our story for you today it's okay to believe in something. You always should believe in something and you should stand by what you believe in. That's okay, regardless of what you believe in, right? You can you can stand for something and you can believe in something and it's important. It's a freedom, it's a right that we have and it's a beautiful thing. So anyway, we're gonna get back to farming here. You know, we gotta get these chickens packed up for the night. Gotta check the waters on everybody. And, uh, and then we're gonna relax and we're gonna enjoy this day. We went and checked the cows earlier. They're all doing good. We got about, I don't know, 20, 25 calves on the ground. And we will continue our search for more land and uh, continue to, to work hard to expand the farm footprint. And um, that's it. So if you're in the area, we'd love to love to see you. Love to have you stop by, but reach out first so we can make sure we're, we're available to, uh, to do that. And uh, if you're looking for meat, we'll ship it right to your house. WeAreFreedomFarms.com, WeAreFreedomFarms.com. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I say it at the end of every video, uh, we have Joel Salatin coming to Freedom Farms in uh, July, July 20th. He's, he's coming here, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a great day. We're gonna talk about farming, the business of farming. We're gonna talk about working the land, strategies to maximize output on the land. And it's gonna be a fantastic day. We'd love to have you. You can go to uh, wearefreedomfarms.com, store, and special events, and we'll have it there for you. And uh, I'll put a link down below too. So we'd love to have you. If you want to meet Joel, this is going to be the place to do it because it's going to be a very private day, and it's going to be a chance for you to spend some good time with him and ask him uh, whatever questions you have, and we're going to make it personal. We're going to have a little breakfast. We're going to have a little lunch, and we're going to have a good time here at Freedom Farms. So... Anyway, have a great day, have a great night, have a great life. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give us a share, give us some love and we'll give it back. And uh, we love the comments down below. We love uh, engaging with you and we look forward to it. So farmers, stay strong and everybody else, we're gonna keep working hard for you to get you the, the best quality off the farm meat that we can. And we'll, uh, we'll hold true to that commitment. So have a great day and we'll see you soon, bye.